everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm talking to you about the cycles a narcissist will go through when they think you won't leave them. So this is important to understand because um, a lot of people have the misconception that it's like a really bad relationship and it's just going to stay that way forever. And again, this re applies to every type of relationship. It doesn't just have to be a romantic relationship. You don't have to be living with the person. Um, this can be a work relationship. It can be um, a, a, a parent to a child or a sibling relationship, whatever the situation is. You know, these kinds of behaviors will apply across the board. So um, keep that in mind. Um, I know a lot of times my examples are about people who are in romantic relationships with a narcissist, and that's because that's primarily um, my target audience. Uh, most of my clients are in that type of situation. Okay, so um, number one, when a narcissist thinks that you're not going to leave them for whatever reason, um, oftentimes narcissists get, get comfortable in um, depending on you and especially if um, if the, if you've been with the narcissist for a while and there has not been any kind of pushback at all from you so if you've been living with the narcissist or if you've been working for the narcissist or whatever your case may be and you haven't really brought up too much about how you want things to change or perhaps you have brought up that you want some behaviors to change but you actually haven't been enforcing boundaries by the way, this is something, <clears throat> excuse me, that I, I address a lot on this channel because a lot of people will say, I set up boundaries and the narcissist didn't pay attention to them and uh, they just ignored my boundaries. Okay, you have a suggestion. In that case, that's a suggestion. That's not a boundary. A boundary will have very clear consequences about what will happen if they break the boundaries. And the problem is most people never set up these consequences and they certainly don't enforce them. So you need to establish and enforce consequences to have boundaries. Boundaries are not just saying, um, I want A to change. Okay, if you want A to change, then what will happen if A doesn't change? You need to be able to to articulate what it will occur if you don't get the desired change that you are looking for. Okay, so number one, let's make sure that it's not your issue because a narcissist is going to do what a narcissist does and and while that's very upsetting and it's very disturbing we shouldn't be surprised when the narcissist doesn't change because why would they they're they're the ones who are going to continue to do what they're going to do and they are showing you who they truly are you're the one who needs to change if you want something to change okay number two if you are um, in a relationship again, or any kind, any kind of relationship with a narcissist, and again, there hasn't been very many boundaries that have been enforced. Maybe you have made yourself clear that you're unhappy with with how things are, that you want things to change or whatever, but you haven't been um, enforcing any kind of boundary, any kind of con consequence to these boundaries. The narcissist cycles of abuse, which I've talked about before, but just to recap, love bombing, devaluation, discard, and then the hoovering phase. This is the general cycle that they go in. Every single time one of these goes on, it gets worse and worse, meaning it's going to be more intense. So this isn't just applied to the devaluation or the discard phases. This includes the love bombing phases. This is exactly what will happen. The narcissist is going to get comfortable with how things are. They know that you're always going to be there and they're go they're no longer happy with this level of supply that you're giving to them. Okay, this is no different from somebody who drinks caffeine all of the time and one cup of caffeine isn't going to do it for them anymore. They need more caffeine in order to still fill the the um energy from the caffeine, right? So they need two cups of coffee now in the morning and soon they're going to need three cups of coffee in the morning. This is exactly how it is for the narcissist. The supply level that they're getting from you isn't going to stay the same. This is why it will progressively get worse and worse and worse the longer that you stay with a narcissist because the level of supply that they got from you in the beginning is not sustainable. 
they need more. They have to have a, a higher level in order to feel fulfilled, in order to feel um, valued, in order to feel any type of emotion that makes them feel good and comfortable about themselves. Okay, so <clears throat> if this is the level that they started at, they're not going to stay there forever. And therefore, all levels of the cycles are going to increase. You're going to see an increase in love bombing. And by that, I mean the intensity of it. So they might have been a little bit nice, right? Their level of nice might have been here. Now during the love bombing phase, they're kicking it up a notch. Everything is getting amped up as these cycles continue progress. They also increase in the intensity level. So while they will have no problem being um, more rude to you, ruthless in their comments towards you, the love bombing phase is going to match that equally. Okay, because they're, they're, the, the narcissist also knows that the, the supply level of what they give to you, the, the small bit of the love bombing phase, has to match the amount of supply that they want to get from you. It's not going to be even in our terms. In normal, healthy people's terms, this isn't like, okay, they wanted, you know, 50, level 50 of supply from me, so I got a level 50 love bombing. No, it's going to be amped up, though. So you're going to notice such a huge difference from their normal level of niceness that you're going to think, OK, now they're really super nice now. And this is just because the level is intensifying all around. This is just because the narcissistic abuse is progressing all around. It, we're not just picking and choosing which one of these is going to be um, increasing. When the narcissist thinks that you're not going to leave, they're very comfortable about where they are, you, you will see them run through these cycles quicker. So I've talked ab uh, about this before, about the importance of tracking the narcissist and tracking your narcissist cycles. And this is because if you are ever trying to plan an escape or you're wanting to leave the narcissist, you should do so right away as soon as you recognize the discard phase. As soon as the discard phase happens, you should be prepared in your mind, prepared physically, like so your stuff should be packed or whatever. You should have another place for you to go that is safe. You need to uh, plan in advance for how you will um, how you will leave during the discard phase. It's most important that that you do have a plan in place and that you recognize when you're going to hit the next love bombing phase. And the reason I say to, if at all possible, to wait until this is on its natural like downward cycle and the narcissist gets rid of you is because you're going to have enough time to say, okay, I have two days, two weeks, two months, whatever it would be, according to your nar narcissist cycle, of how long it will take them to come back around to the love bombing stage. That gives you enough time to mentally prepare for what you need to do and how you need to start separating yourself from the narcissist. Remember, no contact is not just, I didn't call him or her, or I blocked him or her. It's it's completely deleting the person. I'm talking about on every form of social media, blocking, deleting their phone number, any third parties that you know are gonna be flying monkeys in this thing, uh, and if necessary, not sharing your your follow on address, whatever it is that you need to do to put that separation there to truly go non no contact. This is the time to do it and to start mentally preparing yourself. I'm going to go no contact. I'm going to go to this place or here are the steps that I'm going to go through in order to start recovering from the abuse that you've gone through. Narcissists, like I said, when they think that you're very comfortable and you're not gonna go anywhere, they will start cycling through these phases of abuse quicker and quicker and quicker and more intense. So their devaluation phase, where they're they're calling you names, they're, they're making threats, they're, um, they're in some way devaluing, devaluing you as a human and your relationship with them. And this is true especially of people who are married. Um, <clears throat> you will notice them quickly coming in through the discard phase, like, why don't you just leave? I want a divorce. Uh, it would be better if you found a different job. Whatever whatever um, situation that you're in, 
the language of getting rid of you will come and that will quickly be followed by the hoovering stage okay this is third party people coming to check up in on you oh is everything going okay i just sensed that maybe something was wrong or so and so said that you know they saw a post or whatever um the the third party people are are heavily invested in your relationship whether you whether you think so or not it's because they are very attached to the narcissist and i've talked a lot about the flying monkeys on this channel already so i'm not really going to go over why it is that they feel the need to get involved in your business but long story short they're also uh have their own form of trauma bond to the narcissist and as as well-meaning as they might seem as innocent as their relationship or inquiry into your relationship might might seem um there's make no doubt about it their loyalty is always to the narcissist and whatever you tell them they will report back to the narcissist which is why again i stress going no contact and including the the mutual friends or family and friends of the narcissist that you cut all ties and this is why the third party the third parties that you think are innocent in this situation will no doubt be feeding the narcissist information and if push comes to shove they will always take the narcissist position as well and that's important to know if there's a chance that you might end up in court with the narcissist okay because any kind of thing that you tell that third party they will absolutely use that against you um so make no mistake about that so the hoovering stage is going to come quickly and then quickly again love bombing phase and the narcissist does this because they can now quickly get their the supply the um the energy that they need by doing the whole narcissistic abuse cycle in the first place they're able to get this very quickly easily they don't need to put a whole lot of effort into um you know apologizing or weaseling their way back into your life now it's just on an automatic cycle so they can cycle through quickly they don't think that you're going to actually go anywhere they see no reason to even apologize or try to pretend that they're going to get better they know that they're not and they they know that you're going to tolerate it in their mind they believe that you will tolerate it and the reason that they believe that you're going to tolerate it is because you've tolerated it until this point you've allowed them to come to this conclusion through your through your actions so it's really important that you understand the only way that this cycle ends is when you say it ends and when you decide to, to make a change the narcissist is who they are they're going to intensify the abuse it will not somehow just level off when they find a new supply you're going to find sometimes a reprieve of the abuse but again that will come in all of the forms so if a narcissist finds another supply for example you'll have a reprieve from the um the devaluation discard phase hoovering phase all this stuff right but so will the love bombing phase and this will oftentimes put a lot of supplies uh, like over the top now they feel like they're being um discarded you know they feel like this phase is is really um uh elongated and they're upset about this they want it to come back they are used to a cycle remember that the victim in this situation is also addicted to the narcissist so while the narcissist is on its their own supply of how quickly they want to get and access energy from you you're on a supply through the trauma bond your brain is releasing chemicals on a schedule even if you're not consciously aware like every two weeks that need to have this thing happen you are on a schedule according to when you are releasing the neurotransmitters dumping your all types of chemicals into your bloodstream and it's important that you know this because you a lot of times the chemistry in your body is affecting the way that you are making decisions how you are feeling about a situation with the narcissist whether or not you will leave how long you can stay away from the narcissist and go no contact which again if you haven't checked out the life after narcissism course on my play uh, it's a playlist on my youtube channel please do so because i talk about the importance 
of of going no contact and detoxing your body from your own self. Your body is becoming a toxic place while all of these chemicals are being dumped into your bloodstream. You need time to process all of that stuff out and get yourself a support system. Don't try to do this by yourself. Um, in the description of this video, in fact, there's a there. I run a private Facebook group. Please join us. You can find um, you can find online support if you can't find people who will support you in person who are uh, readily available near you. Okay, so find do whatever you can do. Find people who will support you in some ways so that you're not doing this alone. It's really important, especially as you're detoxing, you're coming off of your addiction to the narcissist, that you do have people who are there to remind you of your goals, why you're doing this, and who can help you remember uh, uh, clearly how things actually were with a narcissist, okay? So that you're not just thinking in your mind, oh, isn't that bad? It was okay. I could do it again. This is, this again makes the trauma bond worse. It strengthens the trauma bond um, and the addiction that you have to the narcissist. So I hope this video helps you understand the cycles that the narcissist will go through. And especially when the narcissist thinks that you won't leave, it's often uh, the case that these cycles will speed up um, and intensify. So they're not just going quickly, they're they're becoming more intense. The things that, that are happening to you, the things that they are saying to you, are gonna get worse and worse in shorter increments of time to the point where it just seems like, okay, this is just normal life. And again, remember that this is having an effect on, on the way that your brain is processing all of the information and including how your, your body is responding to all of the hormones, the neurotransmitters, and the other chemicals that's going on. This is a biochemical reaction in your body that is going along with the abuse. So you guys, I hope this video has helped you. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and click on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.